Right. I'm Marco Martin, and um, I work mainly on Plasma, and now on uh, the KDE Plasma Netbook project, uh, especially thanks to the Q development plat um, framework that they are sponsoring me to work it full time. I'm really, really grateful to them. So let's get something cool out of, the, out of this. And um, I will talk now a bit about the netbook project. And before to say what we have done, um, let's uh, just uh, see uh, why we are moving in this direction. Uh, first of all, netbooks. Uh, why they are something different from a normal desktop computer. Uh, first of all, they are not really a new, new, new thing uh, because uh, it's quite a while that tiny laptop exist. Like in the 90s, there was things like uh, this thing, the Toshiba Libretto, some, um, some Sony stuff, but they were not considered as a, a new kind of device and they were not really popular for mostly two reasons. One, they were bloody expensive, and B, they still didn't have a real um, use case. They were pretty much a, solu a solution in search of a problem. The concept really took off uh, like in 2007, 2008, uh, with, um, before, if, even if it's not uh, <coughs> really a um, commercial product. It was important as well, the one laptop per child thing that makes like people really interested in concept. And then the first EPC that um, really sold a shitload of them. And then there are just many, 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 many different models. Today they are pretty different from then. We'll see why. The so, uh, the first uh, uh, netbook models, um, uh, how they were? They were, um, they were pretty different hardware-wise uh, uh, compared to, um, to, to laptops because they were much, much smaller, even much smaller than now, and they had uh, flash, tiny flash-based uh, storage. And they pretty much have spotted a um, Linux-based OS, but it, it, it was um, um, a custom distribution or not really, um, not really popular distribution with uh, a, a workspace that was usually proprietary and was uh, yeah something really different from the the usual desktop, but. Uh, it was something implemented from scratch, from scratch, like this is the, the one from the, from the Asus uh, Xandros, this one is the, from the Aspire. And then um, after, after a while, since Microsoft said that, uh, seeing that this kind of device was, were selling a lot, so, so how, the, how, how they could enter in this, uh, in this market since the rules were different, so you can either just <coughs> change the, rule, the rules back. So now in most of the uh, uh, Western world malls, they are, uh, the typical netbook you find is just a smaller ra laptop, but with uh, an hard drive and with Windows XP or Windows 7. And they are kind of less different and kind of less interesting um, compared to the third examples. But uh, the, the open source projects uh, also did their, their own uh, proposals. So one uh, we seen was the, um, the Ubuntu network, uh, Netbook Remix. It was uh, just a different workspace, but um, I mixed it with usual GNOME applications so they could be some application work well, some other less uh, less well, and this is also a problem that, as as we said in these days, we we have to and we will have to work really really hard on that. Um, another is um, 
sponsored by Intel, that is Moblin. That is, uh, it has kind of two phases. One is a more a meta distribution. That is something that will be interesting also for us to colonize. And I already tried something on that. And it has also a custom UI that um, is an hardware accelerated canvas where it's possible to access some of the informa some information without leaving, leaving the, the workspace, uh, mixed with, uh, also in this case, with the um, traditional GNOME application. It's not, not that much different to what we are, we are doing, but perhaps we have, um, we have the advantage that, um, that since uh, Plasma is really modular in this really high reuse of code, we have uh, already, even before starting the, the netbook project, uh, many of those uh, components in the form of uh, plasmoid that are really useful in both cases. And then there is, there is of course, Chrome OS that uh, somebody says that is irrelevant, somebody says that is the absolute future. Because Google would say, well, 90% of the cases what you do on a net netbook just browse the web. It's, yeah, it's uh, actually probably true, but um, right now it isn't enough because the, uh, the network isn't so, so available as we experiment in, this, in these days. And, um, and the web browser is still, uh, even, even um, with, the, with the HTML5 efforts, after all, it, it's still really, really good for um, rich UI. So, um, so we have still, uh, kinda, uh, as, um, as said um, Frank uh, this morning, we have still an opportunity uh, before just a browser becomes really enough to do something better. And, um, but this uh, transition to web apps, what is um, actually, it is, um, it is what is really happening, but is kind of just a symptom of um, a transition of how a computer is used. Uh, because in the, like in the 80s, in the 90s, uh, and the first, uh, uh, of last decade, it, the computer were almost uh, disconnected and were mostly like workstation workhorses used just to produce content, uh, much rich content that uh, really needed uh, a full computer like a desktop, like a big laptop. But now, uh, a big use of the, of the concept of the computer is also to consume content or to produce way less uh, complex content, like it can be just text. So, um, uh, and this, of course, um, due to the, to the internet, uh, because uh, we have that big pool of content that we can consume that in the in the 90s and uh, and before we couldn't really have so um, so yeah uh, a concept like the workstation is still really important i don't think it will ever go away and i don't think it will ever fully replace it by web application i don't think it will ever be a real photoshop uh, uh, based on the web uh, but uh, uh, for many users, uh, a full-size computer is uh, not really required anymore. So we, we now can uh, uh, use uh, on the go. We are traveling without have to carry around big laptops or just an even smaller device, netbook size or cell phone size. Depends how we need to be mobile. So. Now, this type of things really found a use case that the first, like the Libretto, we still didn't have. So, we are now really popular. So, uh, okay, what we can learn? This, yeah, this is, um, 
basically what uh, Frank said um, this morning. Um, we can try to offer something that is better to just browsing the web. Um, and we can uh, look at the, yeah, at the example of the iPhone, where a big part of its enormous success is due to, the, to its giant uh, uh, library of applications that many of them are uh, client to web services that um, uh, different from, uh, from just a web page. They are really optimized from the for, for the front factor. They are better uh, offline capabilities. So it makes uh, more, uh, um, uh, more compelling on, on an iPhone to use this client application compared to use just the iPhone version of uh, Safari. And uh, uh, we have to do this in, um, in the spectrum of all the KDE application. We try in Plasma to do our little part that we <coughs> hope it's, uh, it will be useful. Uh, so yeah, here there are some important points. So efficient way to pull content, um, didn't write here, but an efficient way to handle um, when you are offline. So good caching, something that also in Plasma we are still kind of lacking. And uh, yeah, um, writing some uh, specialized interface that are that are really simple that can really fit in small, uh, yeah with less Chrome and more content. Uh, so our little part is uh, indeed the Plasma netbook shell. That uh, Plasma, it's uh, it's not just a desktop shell. It, the most important part of Plasma is a library that we try to design it as flexible as possible. We did try, we did, we did our best to try to not make assumption uh, our Plasma application would look like. So, so there is re really, really little stuff that is desktop specific in the Plasma library. So, we'll, it uh, lets us to to build the workspace to build shells that are for really different form factor. Uh, yeah, why we we did that? Uh, because um, because uh, as as soon as uh, we seen devices like the EPC, it was immediately obvious that they were a really huge uh, opportunity for us um, to increase a little bit uh, uh, Linux and uh, KDE uh, platform um, uh, user share. And, um, but uh, we try to not repeat the, the errors of the first uh, EPC interface and the first Aspire One interface. So uh, we didn't uh, read, write something from scratch that basically burns and dies of, on a single product, but we try to use as much uh, reuse of code as possible while uh, um, while not being uh, being as most flexible as possible, so be something that is not a desktop because here it doesn't make really sense a desktop. So what are the the main components of the Plasma Netbook um, UI? Well, there is the shell that is the application that uh, loads the Plasma components is different from the desktop one. Uh, because yeah, it has a smaller footprint. The code is way more, way more simple. And uh, the, since we couldn't really do a desktop because the screen is small, so having the desktop partly covered by Windows didn't really make sense. So the desktop itself is a, is a window that can be uh, selected and put on the uh, as full screen. And uh, the Two bigger components are uh, uh, what in Plasma are activities or containments. That one is the search and launch. Uh, why the 
this thing exists. Uh, Arthur yesterday men uh, mentioned a, a usability research that they do like a year ago at Topenbossa. And one of the points were um, how people re reacted to the concept of a K-runner. Uh, they really found it uh, really intuitive, but really hidden. And another thing that we found is that the, m the most used way to, to launch applications and to make the computer do what we want is the start menu that is there from Windows 95. But over the years, it becomes really rich, bigger, bigger with many big list of application that made it kind of useless. So an approach like KRunner, it's much more intuitive because you, you just search what you want and it's not more limited to just launch the application, but you can do also other things like searching contacts, searching for files with the Nipomac, uh, even querying uh, web services in KDE uh, SE 4.4, we have a, a working uh, uh, Wikipedia and basically any media wiki uh, runner that you can um, just query in the search field and it will uh, search also on Wikipedia. And we still have uh, something that remembers a menu. Uh, we are not really sure it has it was a good choice because people seem um, still kind of obsessed with the concept of the menu um, compared to the search field. But uh, well, well, we will see how it turns out. And uh, that's it for this component. But the next really, really important component yeah, this is basically what I said. Uh, the other really important component in the Plasma Headbook is what we call the newspaper. It's also an activity type that was uh, necessary because uh, um, in the Plasma desktop, what we have basically is a free floating layouts of your widgets that uh, it's not really feasible here because uh, you don't have much space. So a free-floating layout, it's nice, but it uh, wastes space. And uh, you just have the little amount of space of your screen. So um, we need something that can scroll. And uh, what we end up with was something that really remembered um, the layout of a, of a real um, newspaper. So a column layout with, um, um, with widgets um, laid out in, uh, in these two columns. And this uh, um, is actually really good because uh, uh, what, what's, what's used the Plasma desktop and also, so this uh, um, plasma newspaper. It's used to um, just fetch quick informations. So uh, it's uh, really a metaphor, really near to an actual newspaper. And why we, are you the, okay. Why um, it's um, important to have widgets? Because what, what, um, what is the type of content that you, can, you want to access from a, a computer? Uh, we think there are basically three categories. One is the content that doesn't really need your f full attention. It could be a yeah, microblog, could be the weather that you just uh, see it quickly and you're done. Um, so for the weather, we just see, oh yeah, tomorrow it rains, we are doomed. And we, we don't need to, to actually open a website. So 
it's um, it's really fa a faster way to access this com this content. And then there is a second uh, second category that is the content that maybe is important, but it could uh, like the first category just uh, be enough uh, a quick look. It could be things like uh, news feeds that. I will switch to do the full attention only if uh, only if um, an header of news looks really important, or or maybe also for pin based um, content. So I could have here, uh, for instance, the last uh, unreaded mails. So um, it could be enough to just read the headers and. Pass, um, pass along, or uh, if there is a, some, some email that looks important, I will switch to my full attention, and I will just click on it, launch Kmail, answer to it, and do all we can. And then there is the last category, of course, the, the content that always need, need my full attention, so I will always need a a full big application to do only that could be watching a video, could be uh, writing a document or whatever. So the the um, the plasmoids and the, and the newspaper um, uh, containment can address in a really good way, in a really efficient way, the um, first two types of content. Uh, so so um, most of the widgets that are uh, present in the, um, the newspaper are kind of similar. We can, um, if one wants to develop a widget that is um, well suited here, we can uh, easily uh, extrapolate some guidelines. Uh, more, uh, most of the widgets are uh, clients for web-based services. They um, show useful information that are important information and surprising information. It should be something like uh, news uh, uh, fetched from the internet or something um, fetched from your PIM application from Akonadi. A, a widget that just tells uh, uh, the speed of your processor is really not, uh, it's really relevant. And uh, yeah, usually they are a list of items. Um, if you use uh, the, some common plasma classes, uh, you can, like a pop up applet and scroll view, you can have widgets that, are, that can easily almost, almost uh, automatically adapt to uh, various form factor. If you are developing any Plasma widget, you should always try to as much uh, more f uh, form factors as possible. Uh, like in the panel, uh, they will be just a pop-up, an icon with a, with a pop-up. In the, in the desktop, uh, they should have a kind of contained size, and if, if there is too much content, they just show a scroll bar. In the newspaper, uh, they should um, instead uh, be as uh, tall as possible, so to avoid scroll bar in scroll bar, that is not a really uh, good usable idea. And uh, yeah, in the, in the future, hopefully, we will also migrate to uh, more mobile devices. So if uh, if a widget is done well, like we can see the the example that Frank uh, gave uh, this morning. Uh, the, the open desktop clients are really iPhone-ish uh, looking, so they are they will probably be something worth to try to, to port to more mobile device. So yeah, the future uh, one point really important is yeah is that uh, evolution to mobile device to make a a coherent uh, experience from little device to desktop and. Uh, yeah, bug fixing, bug fixing, bug fixing. Uh, having more widgets that provides more useful information is uh, an email. One is uh, is in the works, like Lion Mail, and we hope uh, other uh, pin based uh, widgets will be available. Also, um, 
the idea from uh, Yen before the the telepathy based contacts. This is also really important. And that's it. Before ending, I'll just show something that I about Moblin that I it, this is just a a quick two hour sack to try to make the plasma netbook project work on a, a on a kind of tiny ish uh, mobile based device we are quite yet there are still many many things that um, they don't go well on a, on a real small device but uh, but yeah it's still kind of it's already kind of fast it kind of works some things will will have to change probably probably we we won't just use the the netbook interface we have a, we will have a new one it's still all to decide but it's already kind of working so i think there is really hope for the future do you have to double click to activate something uh, no uh, it's a great single click but uh, it's still not really working because uh, yeah uh, the, the touch screen of the of this device is not good and and uh, we still not uh, it's we s it's still not really uh, perfection the distinction between the the dragging and the clicking is something that a threshold between the two things that will be adjusted but yeah it will be just single click and that's uh, basically that's it and uh, any questions? Yes. Can you show the previous slides uh, a little longer? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the previous slides. Is still there. Can you make the Sorry. First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we share so many ideas <laughs> about the future. That's cool. <coughs> uh, the question is, um, you, talk, you said that you want to do a plasmoid uh, widget for appointments and emails and stuff like that. Why, why don't you think that it's better to, to launch a standard desktop application instead of implementing everything as a plasma? Uh, well, um, as I said, there's a, uh, a place mode can be really useful to have a quick glance at, um, at what the content is. So, um, yeah, if, for instance, in the, in the netbook we can have a widget that shows uh, your last unread emails, you can already have there. So you can even save time by just deciding, by reading a, a synopsis of, uh, of what you have, decide if, if, if it's the case to switch my full attention to email and launch the application and something that could be just a loss of time if all, all the emails I have is just spam or not important stuff. So I think it's something that could be in some ways um, improve the efficiency of the, um, of the use. So some kind of preview function? Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the N900 has a widget like that and it is really useful for the agenda thing. Oh, okay. uh, my question is, so like I see you're using the Plasma uh, netbook um, interface. Is it usable? Uh, How stable is it nowadays? Yeah, uh, it has still many problems, but yeah, I think for the 4.4 release is something that, uh, yeah, it's it's worth to, to give it a try. It's it's uh, kind of stable. We have some problems, for instance, f with the Intel drivers, the X11 uh, graphic system has some ugly speed problems, and with raster graphic system has some instability problems. So it's, yeah, it's still young, but, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, it's already usable. It's very easy to change between both Plasma versions and KCM, just yeah, like there is just a, a, a KCM control panel. So uh, it should be easy to try and if you try and go back. With it's that. new discard. It's under desktop and it's 
And I noticed that on on uh, Moblin, on the, the native Moblin UI, it's very high performance, it's very fast and very snappy and very fluid. Yeah, it uh, uses does that mean that OpenGL. If, if uh, OpenGL was used as the cute backend for the uh, netbook, yeah, it's still uh, really, it's still really not ready. Uh, in um, using the OpenGL backend uh, on Intel drivers, kind of works. It's kind of fast. There are there are problems with clipping, so we you can see still like icons uh, exiting from their from their. Uh, from their place because they are not cut away because it seems still s there are still some some things that the Intel drivers don't support with Nvidia drivers the you have tons of graphic glitches so it's still not ready but yeah it's the future I hope it's where we are going. Are those are those queue problems or driver problems? Uh, both I think. Roman? Yeah, um, I just wanted to play sort of demos. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, for a minute there, and this uh, newspaper uh, thing that you have—that's pretty. That's basically what I have with my iGoogle page for it right now. Mm, yeah, basically. So, I mean, just why? Um, what would be what would be the advantage of using uh, Plasma Netbook over just having? Uh, for example, from OS or basically just having a web browser open and yeah, um, yeah. What we can see, what, what we, we can say is that um, you would have something that it's already loaded as soon as you turn on the device, and uh, it's you are still a, a really rich API because you can use C plus plus, you can use Python, and you can basically build build a little uh, little widget that are still much more powerful compared to what you so can do in HTML. Yeah, yeah. It would be more integration with other apps. Uh, Besides that, you have all the, uh, the advantages that uh, Plasma itself provides. So, for example, sharing widgets between a netbook and a, a regular desktop or another netbook, you can do that easily. So. You have all the advantages that Plasma Red gives you as a desktop yeah. shell, but in, in a form factor that's more suitable for the Netflix. I think that would be the advantage. You just pointed something. So you said uh, that's something I may not have known about. So you say it would be easy to sort of, if you had two netbooks, to if, to sort of transfer this, uh, your that, setup? On your yeah. Uh, Can you show the UI? Sure. Show the, the, yeah. Uh, I don't think it works there, but. It's uh, possible to uh, oh where yeah. oh it's dead. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's uh, possible to uh, just share a widget over the network, and uh, um, yeah, once it's uh, announced on another device, you can just uh, pull uh, the widget. If it's uh, scripted, it can it can download the, the whole widget code. Mm -hmm. uh, it will share its settings, it will share its, share its uh, data engine. Uh, right now on this device, I don't even zero conf compiled, so. Can you share the whole thing, like the whole layout? Because basically you will combine uh, Yeah, still, uh, I still it's think it's not still yet it's possible, but, but yeah, I, I think, I think it could be quite easy to do, yeah. Maybe it's a good feature. Well, I've got uh, two comments. Uh, mm -hmm. The question was, why not use iGoogle or a browser? Well, you only have like 1,000 by 600 pixels. How many of those pixels do you want to have adverts on? That's my first question. Yeah, exactly. So basically, yeah, I was just playing them as advocate. But that's yeah, there is also also the, the always the single point of failure that is Google. So yes. you are and the out second, of that. Uh, the second comment is when you said, you said, well, this looks good from as soon as you turn on your machine, it's already there. Um, yeah. Something that I observe with the current set of widgets that we use is that they all look terrible when you first turn on the machine. Yeah. Uh, they look terrible when you have no network. Yeah. We, we, I think that we really have to work is to, is to do caching in the data engine. Yeah. It will, I think it shouldn't be hard. It, it just is still to do, but 
it should be quite yeah yeah quite easy to to just um, cache the the last value so so all the your old values and also have some nice default graphics so that even when you first start up a plasma network shell without any any network connectivity or any configuration yeah it's good not like every widget has a big configure button in the middle because it's a big yeah. turn off yeah uh, uh, so a really important they just have changes don't they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, er, er, another really important thing is the is the um, open desktop KCM that uh, Frank uh, showed this this morning. That uh, that uh, what we need. Yeah, a, a central place to configure all your accounts and then and then all your widgets just uh, pull from there. So you just configure one time and they will just work. Is yeah. Another thing that it's just in the beginnings. Sure. Another thing I noticed with the, the, the newspaper view, you want it to be pretty informative. Um, mm -hmm. And I find when I try and use it, I'm often trying to scroll up and down, and I click on an active area, and it launches some application full screen, and I've suddenly lost my contacts. Mm. Surprise. Yeah. So in real newspaper, is, is kind of read only. You can only change your view between pages. Um, it seems like there's a lot of ways to, to lose your context. Yeah, it's, uh, mm, yeah we, we should be probably a little more um, coherent in that. But, but a point was, uh, was yeah, really um, also give this possibility to, um, to have content that you can have a preview. And if you want to be more informed, just uh, launches an uh, associated application. It's uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's still something that could confuse sometimes. So we we have to be more coherent. Probably, I think maybe a panel with a big back button or something like that. Have you, you know? thought about a way to make it more obvious when you change from um, from the search and launch to the application that you launch, so you can see what the consequences of an action are? So it's not just like a Sort of change of like a big, an, a big animation, so something like that. So yeah, I think I think probably will can it will be quite easy to do with a Queen uh, effect probably. You guys have already given me so much, <laughs> and it's only Sundays. <laughs> I mean, can you easily have a, a, a Queen effect from a, a, a plasma shell screen to a full screen app? Yeah, I think it should be hard to do something like that. There is already uh, an effect to do uh, some kind of uh, pages, uh, okay. thing like that. Pop behind, like pop behind. Yeah, there is some already something like that. So probably we we will need something similar, more uh, more tailored to that. But I think it should be really possible. Yeah. Okay. Still something else. <laughs> So, Chani? <laughs> <laughs>